Tux is just biding his time until I come out the door. He let Marty walk past him. And um, Stripe's trying to shrink into the steps there. And Morris is behaving. Now trust me, if any of them were to approach Tux, he would be not pleased. I see Marty has taken up his spot in the chair for the day. He really does stay in that spot a lot. It's not the only spot, but it's a frequent spot. We're headed for our walk. We are, or I am, headed to Tesla with Ruby today, but a little bit later. Yeah, when they rescheduled our service appointment, they made it for like an hour later. Yeah. And um, that's actually good because we get to walk. Yeah, that's right. We'll be back in a little bit, Jules. The sun's coming out. It's warming up. The guys are going to mow the grass while we're here, but Don had a little chit-chat with them, and Jules is plenty far away from the curb. And he was a nice guy and promised to point the grass away from the car, so we're good. The gentleman we see riding his bike most mornings, he went by us at a pretty good speed. Doesn't bother us at all. We always smile and good morning. And But he gets that great downhill breeze, and then he has to turn around and go uphill. And we just kind of watch keep our pace he's always got a smile you get kind of I don't know friendly with and used to seeing certain people on the trail I told Don I always make friends with everybody that way if I ever have any trouble and he's not with me people will help good morning bunny is that leaf good I <laughs> tried to take the leaf with him <laughs> Don has us 15 minutes earlier than usual today to give me enough of a cushion to shower and change before I head to Tesla. When they rescheduled the appointment, they simply made it for about an hour later than the original appointment. So, um, like I said, that was good because we got to get in our walk. I wasn't going to be happy about missing my walk. Well, mostly because it's summer and there's no really good time of the day to make it up. I mean, I could do the desk cycle, but that's a lot of cycling to make up the walk and uh yeah so don actually has a 10 a.m and uh i'm gonna head up there and just see if they'll give me a loaner car i know they probably don't have one like they used to but there's a chance i'm sure they would offer me a lift but you know i'm basically a country girl and i ain't never done lift before and i probably don't want to do that plus sides lift is not practical down to fuquay and back up to tesla i mean that's sort of I mean, in a pinch, if I had to, if I had no other choice. So, I'm going to see if they have a loaner for me. I'm going to wait and see how long it'll be. And if Don gets done with his conference calls, he'll come get me. If I sit a couple hours, that's all right. I got my phone. I'm good. Maybe there's a Plaid Model S to look at. I heard that a car hauler full of Plaid Model S was delivered to Raleigh yesterday. Zeb actually passed. Um, the car hauler while he was out driving yesterday morning he just happened to pass it so kiss kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> so Zeb being our um, triangle Tesla president so if I could see a plaid model s if they happen to have one in the showroom if I could drive the Plaid Model at, test drive it, you know, that's not going to happen, but a girl could hope, right? I'm sure I can find things at Tesla to keep me busy on top of the, um, on top of just my phone. So apparently I got a new game called Skyforce Reloaded and new language support, um, for uh, Finnish and Croatian, it says. So, yeah, let's not test me on knowing every flag in the world because honestly, I didn't know those two. I can admit it. Uh, so, yeah, 2021.12.25.6 went on uh, Ruby last night. Jules doesn't have this release yet. So, Nav says, I will get to Tesla store and service on Glenwood Avenue um, at 10.35 a.m. My appointment's for 10.40. Good to know I'm not late since it's already 9.50 and I was thinking I was running a little late. It will have me get on the turnpike, so that's cool. Actually, it doesn't have me going on the turnpike to get up there, which I'm a little surprised about. How can that not be shorter? 
Yeah, for sanity purposes, I brought up Google Maps on my phone and basically taking the toll road or not taking the toll road is a similar ETA, so I can go whichever way I prefer. And I'm now, according to NAV, getting there at 10.39 a.m. So I'm probably gonna take the toll road in the hopes that that'll save me a minute or two and plus I just feel safer and more comfortable on the toll road. Um, then going up, there's a lot of construction you might remember on US 1 North right now. It's all tore up over there and there's a lot of um, cement barricades and narrow lanes and I'd like to avoid that area if possible. I'll be happier. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the toll road. <laughs> deliveries it's like empty over here I don't think since they opened have I seen so few cars in the lot I mean wow like there's a place to park today I'm totally surprised so one of the guys that's worked here for a while checked me in we had a good chat um, there are some plaid model s here but probably like not inside where I can see it but we'll see uh, probably waiting on, they offered me Uber. I said, no thanks, but I might change my mind. And Don, I'll let him know. He'll probably be here to get me in a while. So they're so cleaned out right now that there's not even any demo cars inside. I'm just kind of sitting here in this big open space. You're not gonna be able to see very much and neither can I, by the way, but that is a brand new Plaid Model S waiting for delivery. And obviously they don't let people walk up and touch the cars that are um, spoken for that are, are about to be delivered to be purchased. And uh, I think that's obviously the right thing. But there is one. 
but the door is closed and the glare is bad and I can't see. I think they're all inside. All of the plaids that came in on that truck yesterday are inside. None of them are outside and they're getting prepped for the delivery. I don't know if they're scheduled yet or not, but I thought I'd come out here and walk around a lot anyway. Like I said, there's not a lot of anything here today. <laughs> I would say this Model X here. Yeah, I don't know. I was gonna say it's not a new car. I'm not sure. This is, this side over here on the right is typically where the um, vehicles ready to be delivered would be. There's a nice new black Model Y. You know, they prep them and then they move them out here. I will. Uh, I guess pay a little better attention here in the minute as I walk up the other way. It's always nice to see all the pretty Teslas. I really just want to be able to say I've seen the yoke in person. That's all I want. I can see it from 10 feet away. I probably should ask nicely up there if I could peek in through the door even if I can't set foot through the door but I'm just not a very assertive person so I don't often ask stuff but you know I also get if they put one of the ones with the yoke out here on the lot then people are not all, all going to do the right things and it'll draw attention and they'll eventually get in a demo car and then people will be allowed to touchy-feely that they just, you know, don't have enough to go around right now for people that want the car to purchase it. And I totally get that they get priority. Yeah, some of these are probably trade-ins and some of them are probably service-related and usually services. People's real personal cars are over on this side. Yeah, I knew the chances of seeing anything weren't good. I do like that red, white, and blue. The white being the building there and the cars. There's Nani to pick me up. You're better late than never, husband. I had a comfortable seat, uh, well air conditioned, like Lady Gaga music channel and one of the other Tesla people singing with me. Right. Uh, uh, it was no hardship. Okay, good. that's good to hear. Good Although if when I went to look she'd been done, that would have been cool, but yeah, you know. I so my wonderful husband, my hardworking husband, he's got to get on a conference call. He's got six minutes to get his headset yeah, hooked up and it. on it. Yeah. But I just want you to know that um there were three people that came in this morning looking to see a model x really i didn't hear anyone come in to see any other car and um they don't have one uh -huh. and they're not expecting the refreshed one anytime soon i heard one person say february surely okay. i heard surely i heard wrong but it was taller people older people and just people that knew what they wanted or wanted the best car Tesla had yeah, and they assumed baby. that was the Model X so Absolutely. I wanted to go pull Ruby out of service and help I mean it was all I could do to sit there and let the salespeople do their job and keep my mouth shut and not go grab my car so right. I could demo it I was really having trouble yeah they let me sit there any longer they were gonna have to put me to work not because I was bored but because it would have been so much fun right. If Tesla wasn't 45 minutes away, right. I would be looking for part-time work selling Teslas, right. but, but it's a little bit of a drive even on the turnpike. So. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, just if you think people don't care about the X, you're wrong. Oh, I, I understand. Way cool. These guys are uh, staying cool as they can. It is cooler under the bench than it is out here in the sun, for sure. Tex may be buried in over here somewhere. He's not far. I saw him a little bit ago. I had uh, a little bit of leftover chuck roast and some Brussels sprouts. And I am, uh, got something in my tummy. Like I said, I, you know, I'm plowing along. Y'all would think I was feeling great. Most days I'm not feeling that great and I'm just plowing along anyway. 
but I am going to go try to get the GMC inspected. Wish me luck. I've never driven it more than a couple of feet. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's got to be very similar to driving my van. Just making sure Tux isn't back over here somewhere. I don't see him. Sometimes they get up on that shelf. I'm looking for the shifter. Where's the shifter? <laughs> That's right. It's down here. Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay, it is in drive. Like I said, never press the accelerator until you're sure the car is in the cure you intend. Just double checking there is a half a tank of gas because, you know, while I'm willing to go get it inspected and absolutely happy to do that for Don while he's working so hard for us, I sure don't want to have to stop in at a gas station and figure that out. Well, for starters, I wouldn't know what I was doing in the GMC versus the Odyssey. And then also gas, yuck. All right, I'm back over here with the GMC for the inspection today. Yeah, I told them today I'd take them up on their offer to uh, come sit inside where it's cool. I didn't need to hover with the GMC. <laughs> no hovering. All right, that only took a few minutes and we're all legal and paid up on inspections for another year. We're headed back to Tesla to get Ruby. She should have her new shoes on. Um, they messaged me about 5 p.m. and right, right at 5 and said she was ready for pickup. Previously in the app it said estimated completion was 6.30 p.m. So um, anyway, she's ready to go and we're on our way to get her. It says we've only got 15 miles left. I guess you're going to need to go see if we can plug in over there for a few minutes. Why don't you see if there's a spot? Because there are like six chargers over there and I would consider that an emergency. Right, well, I'm a kid, I don't understand. I've charged up Ruby. I didn't look to see how many miles I started the day with. Right, well, we, you charged up Jules. You plugged Ruby in yesterday. No, from... I plugged Jules in last night. Uh, okay. Well, like you said, I'll, let me go. Yeah. Besides the fact, yeah, we need to see if we can charge. Yeah, we're well, we'll look in Tesla Fi and see how we got here, but the short answer is thanks for letting us know, Jules, and uh, yeah, we're backed into the charger now, so we'll just get us some juice here. Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, it's faster. It's 48 amps. Okay. 213 volts, so it's, it's um, 208 service, not 240, but it's at 48 amps. Right. Well, we'll make a decision in a bit, because we're basically going back past the carry supercharger by the target. At this point now, that I would definitely... Um, of course, 15, I mean, it should be enough. Yeah, we'll see how long, how fat. Yeah, I don't either. Did I drive Jules today? No, I No, didn't. you're the only one that drove Jules. And only this is like the second trip to Raleigh. Okay. Yeah, that's why I meant. It's like something Okay, Donnie, now Ruby needs a bath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New yeah. tires on dirty wheels. Yeah. Well, that's okay. While Michelle and I are in Guardian Angel tomorrow morning, we won't notice that, um... The tires are dirty. So the wheels look fine. Yeah. And uh, Don's going to go by the carry supercharger. I can yeah. pull in and keep you company. Whatever you want to do. As <laughs> long as you got me something to eat when I get home, you're going to be good. Girl. I guess that means he doesn't want me to follow him in and he wants well, me to I'm get cooking. I'm long enough to get home. I'm not going to stay there 25 Yeah, I understand. Charge up to get 50 miles, let's say. Okay. I'm to get home and then I'm, I'm going. Okay. I love you. I love you too. Kiss, kiss. kiss, kiss. So uh, it's going on 6.30 and uh, basically service had closed at 5 but you can pay in the app and the salespeople can hand you the key and the car. You know Ruby was parked out not too far from where we parked Jules. There were two red X's there and I didn't see Ruby. I first saw the other X. At any point um, Don's headed to the supercharger to get some juice, uh, the carry supercharger, which is just off the turnpike. And um, I'm headed home to get dinner started because he's only going to charge and go. He's just going to put just enough in to make sure he can get to the house and, and leave five, ten minutes that the supercharger will be totally sufficient. Let's see, what else was I going to say? Uh, got the new tires on, brakes and brake fluid didn't need anything. They looked great with an explanation point. The only little hiccup today was um, they were not able to do the alignment on the car because the alignment machine went down midday. Um, and we did not know that prior to getting up here, which I would, not sure what we would have done different, but might would like to have known. So I'm working with them to reschedule that because obviously we didn't want to put too many miles on um, new tires without the alignment. 
uh, so I'll work with them and they did you know say that they would work with us on that um, so it is what it is I thought I had the Ruby taken care of before back to school box checked off and not quite oh and the other thing they looked at was the um, Ruby waking up too often and they think it's Tesla Fi I'm not I'm not saying it's not and that we can't make an adjustment but I'm not saying that I'm convinced that it is yet so I'm gonna do what I should have done before which is go do some more diagnosis on it myself and uh, see if I can figure it out I'm gonna start by changing some of the defaults from 15 minutes to 20 minutes and see if the log um, logging that I noticed with 15 minute intervals changes to 20 minute intervals and then the second thing I'm gonna do is set Tesla 5 for Ruby back to the defaults because obviously we're not having this problem with Jules and then if all else fails I'll ask the nice guy that does Tesla 5 because he always responds to tickets and I'm sure he would be helpful in um, figuring out what might be going on but like I said I'm not convinced it's Tesla 5 um, I'm not not willing to agree that that's the problem at this point so I'll look into it further keep you guys appraised when I have time to do that Don's about 15 minutes behind me he um, got up to 50 miles of charge of range and left he said uh, everything was going good and then uh, another Tesla owner um, pulled up next to him and started sharing his charging and that dropped the rate and so he was out of there I got out of Ruby and there was a definite distinct rubber smell from the new tires. <laughs> Let me remember to plug her in, although I don't think I'm going too far tomorrow, but maybe I'm going farther than I think we should always plug in. So I got supercharger with like 13 miles, I think it was. Uh, I've only been plugged in for like a minute or two. Uh, somebody had left a shopping cart in front of this charger. It was the only... Uh, 1A, 1B, and um, all the other ones are spaced out. It's, it's basically uh, everybody's plugged into a, a cabinet. Uh, so, you know, this was a good good one to, to get. Uh, I'm charging at 116 kilowatts. it would probably go up. Um, and it is going up, as you can see. Um, uh, uh, as I think this is 150 kilowatt max or something like that. This is not a version 3. So uh, hopefully um, I'm going to stay here and charge until like um, uh, probably 10 minutes or so. Uh, get home with a little bit of a range left. I don't want to have to uh, worry about range. I mean if you're stopping I've already wasted. Um, let's see. It's, this is actually to get to here isn't too bad. But to get back on the interstate, it's a little gyrating around. So this is one of those that takes probably five, at least five minutes total driving time to get from the uh, tollway down to parked uh, and back. You're going to get at least five minutes of time. I can't win. I was at 143 kilowatts and this Model Y comes in. Of course, she could have plugged in anywhere, but she chose to plug in me. So uh, I guess I'm not going to be here very long now. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sit here at 74 kilowatts in charge. Uh, so whoever said that he who plugs in first gets the biggest charge, um, they'd be wrong. I, I think we're splitting, pretty much splitting the, uh, the charge. I think she's getting 75 kilowatts and I'm getting 75 maybe she's getting a little less I'm, maybe I'm getting 10 kilowatts more but I would tell you that that's um, I think it's a fantasy but I'm going to go up to 50 miles here and then I'm just going to unplug here and go because there's no use of sitting here I don't need to charge and at 74 kilowatts uh, it's not worth my, my time I'm hungry the kitten's got supper waiting for me when I get home. I went out like at midnight this morning and plugged Jules in because I remembered we were going somewhere. All right, so first off, one home charge for one hour and seven minutes occurred. And it did occur from 12, 21 a.m. to 1, 28 a.m. So you did charge the car last night like you remembered. 
but it says charge complete. Right. You went from 39% to 51%, which is your normal COVID. I don't drive yep. very much charge. I agree 100%. That is correct. Yep. And so miles added was 30. Um, it doesn't tell us exactly how many miles at that point the car thinks it had. I don't even think it tells us that if we look at the charge record, which in my opinion is sort of... Um, well, it, had like, it should annoying. have had like 138. Right. I agree. It should have been somewhere between 130 and 150 at that point. All right. So you did charge last night. You did charge. Your memory was, was good on that because I figured for sure it's it's just taking a minute to draw here. I thought for sure that was going to be the answer. The was easy answer. The easy answer. Come on, testify, please. Sweetheart, we draw the page. Thank you. So you drove 147 miles today, and that is over the 138 you would have thought you had. So the fact that holy, you, how did so I do the 130? Fact, the fact that you ran out nearly at 15 miles and got the nasty gram message to me that tells me that's accurate. And also, it says you used 154 miles. You weren't very efficient today. 95.76. <laughs> you weren't very efficient today. So you're driving for three hours and 20 minutes. So let's look at the drive records. Actually, I'm going to come up here. And one of the nice things you can do is let's just look at the drive records. So, you know, we drove to the environmental park and oh. then you ro drove home and that was nothing, right? That should have been, that's less than a mile. That sounds right. You moved her around in the driveway to put her in the garage after I dropped her off out yeah. there in the middle of the driveway. Look, it cost me a cent to put her in the garage. Quit fussing. And then, um, home to home. I don't know when that was this afternoon. You must have moved her around on the driveway somehow. Um, oh, home to home when you were at, when you picked me up at Tesla, you never went into park. That's correct. So it looks like you didn't stop at Tesla, like you were never there, but you were. Right. Okay. So that used 72 miles of range. Wow. Um, I knew it was like 30 miles in each direction. So it's more like 36 35, miles. 36 each, miles. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then home to Tesla again was another 36, 36 miles. miles. So you can see where you were, you know, oh, well, oh. At, like around 110, something like that. Um, and then, you know, not totally efficient. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can see how you got into trouble a little bit today. So the next time I have service at Tesla, and you're going to be chauffeuring me, yeah, bump yeah. the charge I rate need up to bump up eighty percent. This is strictly because Don hasn't been charging over fifty percent because he doesn't drive very much during the right. week, except to the environmental park and back. And it just seems, you yeah. know, there's yeah. a school of thought: eighty or ninety percent every day. No matter what, don't fluctuate, don't change it. And then you won't get into these kind of jams, troubles, well, it wasn't contingencies. Real, yeah, it just was unexpected. A little, it was unexpected. That's the right word, yeah. unexpected. I just, but, but Don and I are capable in our ability to handle these unexpected turn of events. Right. And so he got really lucky he could plug in right there at Tesla and get. Oh, I could have made it to the supercharger. Probably. It was 9.7 miles when and I did. And you had. It. Yeah, why would you should have showed well, 13 up? 13 miles? Come on. <laughs> Kyle would have done it. Right, Mr. 2%. Yeah, so that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, and you, as you said, the supercharger, he was getting like 140 something. And was yeah, you really, should show the supercharger. He was really happy at the supercharger until somebody plugged in. Yeah. Um, all right. So if I come up here and I just do charges, right? Then this was the home charge. This was the charge at Tesla. You know, he's plugged in. That was twenty minutes was longer than I thought. Right. I know it was that. Long. Um. And then at the um Tesla supercharger. Here. Right. Yeah. See what I meant? What happened to him? We were doing good. Doing good. Doing good. And, and then that lady plugged in, and it was like, "Whoop!" The bottom fell out. Yeah. Charger kilowatt is in this blue no uh that looks like the wrong blue yeah you that's right you click you can click the colors and they turn off so click uh, yeah so how do i get i'm confused uh kilowatt right so there's charger kilowatt and you can sort of see that you were Doing this is to this lot. Well, if I move the cursor, it'll change. But the 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 line above it is at two hundred voltage, and you can see where all of a sudden, poof, it yeah. went it went down. 
try a uh, charger current. Well, miles per hour dropped. I mean, they all sort of dropped. If I take it away, they all kind of dropped, except for the um, voltage, which you would have expected to yeah, be. Yeah, the voltage isn't relatively changed. Relatively unchanged changed, over yeah. the course of the charge. So. Yeah, so anyway, once she plugged in, I stayed there for like another two minutes, and I left. Yeah, that light blue line at the bottom is the battery level. And I don't know why the kilowatt one doesn't even show unless I hover over it. Yeah, and well, then it, like, it gets added. I yeah. guess it and the red line, the battery kilowatt and the charging kilowatt, they're overlapping so you don't see you, them both or something. You need to watch something. these minutes. This is a minute. This is 45 minutes, 645. Yeah, 640. You got to watch out. So that 48. window from that 47 to 48, that's the one minute. So it went from the high charge rate of uh like yeah of ever how many miles that was it and it dropped like i said the bottom fell out the of the bottom it. fell out of it because don said you know if i was getting 140 kilowatt i'd have stayed for another five or ten minutes and picked up some juice to cushion it look charge less at home tonight because yeah. ruby's charging too yeah but when it fell to 70 something i wasn't hanging out for that yeah. and uh, the other thing hungry. i'm going to add is yes yeah, he's always hungry um but he only eats once a day but he's always mm -hmm. hungry he's always hungry so you were at the supercharger for only five minutes and the thing of it is is you were 15 minutes behind me so it was five minutes off the road through the stoplight to the back of the shopping That's center right. in both directions this this charger is not a is a community convenience charger near the target with a lot of people that probably don't have charging at home using it once or twice a week versus a I'm on the interstate, easy on, it's easy on. It's not a traveled super, but it is a full supercharger, not a um, uh, urban urban charger, but it, it's really, its usage is more urban, so. Yeah, well, I definitely agree. In fact, I said that in my video that that charger isn't really super duper convenient because you have to, if, it, if there was another entrance to that shopping center, Right. That took you more directly. You have to go all you the way You have to wind around. through the yeah. shopping center to get to the char supercharger. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. But anyway, uh, it was sort of added a little interest to today's video, we yeah. hope, as far as. Uh, and I'm sure there were other options. Um, like Don said, he could make it back to the supercharger. Yeah. But being that we were up near Crabtree Mall and close to downtown Raleigh, there were other level two chargers around there if we'd have been. Matter of fact, the Electrify America charger right. over there at Pleasant Valley Promenade is just like three miles away. Oh, and not even that far. Yeah, so you were, you were really right there at the Electrify America charger. Too. Yeah, you, if you were going to be low on charge, you were in a good spot. Yeah.